It's the latest technology, and it's called the Monarch. It's the latest technology in early location of lung cancer. And where will you find it? You'll find it here at Senior River uh, Health Systems, Ocean Springs Hospital location, Dr. Bobber. It's good to see you again. Good to see you, Jim. Um, you have, we've, we've talked to you before yeah. uh, about other things too, but this is something brand new. Right. That, uh, and it, it's amazing how you know, we were showing them to get it all set up and everything, how it works. Tell us about the um, technology behind this. Yeah, so um, if you recall, um, on our previous discussions, we talked about how our efforts are to locate cancer when it's a very small spot in the lungs. Um, and the first version of this was to have navigation where the computer would actually give us through its software a path to getting to this. So this robotic bronchoscope is an improvement on that. Um, first of all, um, this, the bronchoscope is being controlled almost entirely by um, this little control um, panel yeah. here. And, a PlayStation. Um, a PlayStation, <laughs> literally that's what it is. And um, <clears throat> because of that control, you know, the sort of movement that we could introduce because of our manually holding the bronchoscope has been eliminated. And that's a big thing. When you're looking at uh, sub-centimeter nodules, even the slightest motion can take you away from where you want to be. Um, so that's one major thing. The other thing is the scope in here, there's another scope inside this, is so small and we can actually maintain vision all the way to the periphery of the lung which is huge because when we used to do navigation before, we would lose vision. We would only be going by the computer generated track that we had. Mm -hmm. So some, some really cool advantages come with this, um, uh, with this uh, Monarch here. Well, lung cancer is responsible for more cancer related deaths in the world. Um, you know, second to um, skin cancer um, that causes it. And so this really gives you all a, a leg up on early detection and finding it and being able to treat it. Right, you know, the efforts um, in lung cancer, as you said, lung cancer is a major killer. Um, and our efforts are to detect it in the early stages. And I think this was all revolutionized when we were able to demonstrate that doing yearly annual CT scans on these patients would catch these. So that's part of this whole uh, approach is that we catch it early by doing CT scans regularly on people between the ages of 55 and 77 who've been smokers. And then when we catch it, then we detect it by using techniques such as these. And then once we detect it, then early then we can well, I was about to ask you who yeah. are, the, are the best candidates, and you just answered that question. Right. Um, the, um, um, what inspired you to learn this technology? I think, um, you know, I'd become very comfortable with navigation, the way we were doing it before, uh, but um, this was the latest technology available to us, and, uh, you know, just looking at the data on this and speaking to some of the experts, who are doing this, I felt that this would be a step up from what we're doing, and it would take us that much closer to making this, this diagnosis. What, what's the benefits to a patient using this technology compared to the technology that you were using? Yeah, the benefit is that we have a higher chance of getting the diagnosis. That's the main benefit. Otherwise, the patient wouldn't really know the difference. Now, how does this uh, new technology assist you in these procedures? Well, because we are maintaining vision throughout, mm -hmm. we can actually That's what the little see. camera on the end of it with the right. light. So, so with the light, and we can actually see where we are going as opposed to before where it was a blind procedure. We can actually see and we can change the trajectory we are using if we don't get the diagnosis the, the first time. So when we're doing it, we actually have a cytotechnologist looking at the slides as we're getting cells out and telling us if we've got abnormal cells or not. So um, that's, how it, that's how, it, how it helps us. So these are the arms here that kind of move around. Uh, you've got the tube that actually goes into the patient. Right. And you control it all with the, the PlayStation. Absolutely. And, that's and, it. And then watching it, watching it on, watching the, on it the camera. Watching it up there. And uh -huh. there's actually, besides the, the, the bronchoscope view, which is what this is, there's another view on the side which is telling me where I am in relation to the computer generated target. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm watching it in two different dimensions. The dimension that I can see right here and the dimension that's generated by the 
uh, the computer. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what it is. And then you have to put it all together, get to the area, and biopsy it. And I see this as a less invasive procedure than some in the past, though. So the recovery time, what's the recovery time like for patients? The recovery time is really pretty quick. I mean, the patient is going to be under general anesthesia for the procedure, but once they go home, you know, in a few hours, they're able to get up and eat and drink, and they're all right. Well, once they've had this treatment, uh, what kind of services can they receive? Well, so once we get the diagnosis, then it's all about finding out what kind of cancer it is, mm -hmm. and then we decide the treatment based on the stage, the type, and this treatment is decided in a, a tumor board where all the oncologists, the pulmonologists, the surgeons, the radiation oncologists sit together and go over every case and make a decision as a group on what the right treatment is going to be. You know, one of the things I've noticed, uh, Dr. Bobber, in all the years that I've been doing the segments with Senior Health System is the, the way the doctors do whenever you have a situation like that, you all get together and come up with uh, what you feel like is the best treatment uh, with the diagnosis that you have on an individual patient. So, uh, Jim, you're absolutely right about this. I think one of the unique features of this health system um, compared to other health systems on the coast is the camaraderie between the physicians and surgeons. Um, and I think this really helps patient outcomes because we talk to each other, we do everything, um, first of all, based on evidence out there, and then we, com we confer with each other on these patients. How many pulmonologists do you have on your team? So we actually have five pulmonologists. Wow. And um, all five of us actually do both critical care and pulmonary care. And so uh, it's a kind of a seamless transition between hospital-based practice and clinic-based practice. Well, once diagnosed, what kind of services and treatments uh, do you provide? Um, once the diagnosis is made, then, um, like I said, we usually uh, sit down together, come up with a treatment plan. Um, the surgeons weigh in on whether the patient is uh, a surgical candidate, and then the radiation doctors and the oncologists give their opinion on that as well. Okay. And do they need to get um, a referral from their uh, general practitioner? Um, for the initial... And just because of the, the logistics involved, whenever anything is identified, the practitioner sends the patient over. But we are actually coming up, we have a, a position open for somebody called a navigator mm -hmm. who will be looking and finding these nodules even before their doctors know about them and bring them into the system. So a nurse navigator will be appointed for this purpose. Thank you so much, Dr. Barber. The new Monarch system that they have here at Sea River Hospital in Ocean Springs. Thank you.